If you're not sure if you have the latest Windows Home Server connector software for your Windows Media Center, all you need to do is open up Windows Media Center. As you scroll up and down, if you do not see the Home Server icon, then you do not have it. So let's walk through it. We're going to go to Start. We're going to go to All Programs. And then you're going to see that it says Windows Media Center Connector. You'll click on that icon once, which will bring up the connector. Now, this will walk us through the process. This will require a restart, so make sure you're prepared for that. So let's click on Next. You're going to type in the password of your home server. Click on Next. It'll take it a moment for it to find it. Okay. It is now ready. Now notice this says do not restart now. You can click on that, otherwise it will restart. And if you leave it, it will automatically restart if you don't do anything with it. Now that we've rebooted the PC, you can see that once we open Windows Media Center, we have a home server listing. We have TV Archive and Console View. For this video, we're going to look at Console View. Console View allows you to look at the graphical interpretation of Windows Media Center for your Windows Home Server. This allows you to see storage information, drive information, backup, shared folder information, media accounts, health, and information about your Windows Home Server. Under Storage here you can see that I have a pie chart broken out with shared folders, duplication, PC backups, system, and free space. Under Drive there would be drive information including serial number information on each drive. Under Backup, you can see it shows the systems that I currently have installed and when the last time they were backed up. Shared Folders shows whether you have duplication on or off and what the status is of each of the folders. Media Accounts show the amount of files that we have listed on the server and then gives you a number of files that you could actually put on based on the average size. So you can see here I have 17 shows recorded and I could record another 341 based on that average file size. To exit out, click on the back button and you're back to Windows Media Center. Now that the Windows Media Center connector has been installed, I will go to my movie library. Now my movie library only has the three movies that are currently available for this PC, but one of the things that I can do is I can actually map to my server. So what I'm going to do is once movie library opens up I'm going to right mouse click and I'm going to click on manage library once I've done that I can add in the server so right mouse click manage library now I can add in the movies so I'm going to add a folder to the library click on next it's on another computer so I'm going to choose on another computer and now it's going to give me a listing of all of the other computers that I can access. You can see Dell 15 because it's the laptop I'm using. I have Dell Studio, which is my other PC, HTPC, which is this PC, and then it'll also bring up the Hollis server. You can see right here, HP server. I can open that up. You can see I have the different folders that are here. I use the arrow keys and I can scroll down and I have videos. I open up videos and this will give me a list of all of the different videos that are available. Now I have all of my DVDs mapped and stored on DVD movies. So I'm going to click once on that. I'm going to click on next and then yes use these locations. You can see that I had Hollis server as I had here listed before. Uh, I can delete that later on but I'm going to click on yes use these locations and click on finish. Now that I've done this it's going to add in HP server for the video folder and it should add in all of the videos that are stored in that folder. Okay, you can see that the three movies of recorded TV are listed here and now it's going to go through and map out everything else that's in that DVD movies folder. 
and just that quickly it brings everything up and it'll go through and add a few more here and there as it goes through and loads everything. In the previous video I showed you how to map to movies. One of the things now that we're going to do is we're going to look at the media library for music and we're going to add music. So to add the music all I need to do is click on add music and it will take me through. You can see it's populating. Select a media library. I'm going to click on music and I'm going to click on next. Now I'm going to remove folders from the library first then I'm going to add them. I'll explain why because I had this previously mapped to Hollis server. So I'm going to uncheck that since I did get my new server. I'm going to uncheck the box and remove that folder. Once I've done that I can go back in and reestablish the link to the HP server that you can see listed here. But I do want to uncheck that so it's available. You can also see that you always want to check the down button or the down arrow to make sure that everything's there. So public HTPC, HP server, and then Hollis server. So I click on next, finish these locations. You can scroll up and down to make sure that you don't have anything else. You can see I still have Hollis server with photos that I want to do. So use these locations, click on finish. Once it's disconnected from the Hollis server mapping, it will go and start mapping all of the music. Now that I've done that, you see it's going to go through and populate out the music library, and it'll start adding in any cover art that's there. Uh, I have all of my iTunes and my Zune mapped to the same share on the HP server, so everything goes there, and it's ready for playing. 